right, it's a very good uh, morning to you. Today happens to be a brand new day and indeed a, a brand new week. We're back with the breakfast, uh, not just a breakfast, but also election coverage right here on Plus TV Africa. Um, the 27th of February is two days after the 24th of, uh, 25th of February when uh, Nigerians trooped out en masse, you know, to go vote uh, for the presidential and national assembly elections um, across the country. I mean, the Independent National Electoral Commission had given us a lot of information as regards uh, what was going to transpire. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, we had um, INEC telling us that um, uh, not all those who are registered to vote were going to be able to participate uh, in the elections. Um, We've we seen that out of the, all the registered voters, those who were going to be able to vote in the election amounted to 87,209,007. Uh, that was what we got from the Independent National Electoral Commission. I'm glad to say we have joining us uh, to analyze uh, what transpired on Saturday and Sunday, because in some parts of the country, uh, in, in Kogi State, for instance, the elections had to hold on Sunday in 141 um, polling units after the cancellations. I'd like to say a very good morning to Opunabo and Kotaria, our guests this morning on the breakfast. Um, Mason and Kotaria, good morning. Thank you very much for your time. Good, good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, still the Nigerian elections coverage on, um, on uh, Plus TV Africa. Um, were you able to vote on, on, on Saturday, Opunabo? Because we saw that uh, your governor, um, the man that is affectionately called Nyerishi, um, the governor of River State, Eze Oyes Owike, had some issues with his BVAS, the Bimodal Voter Accreditation System, and uh, he had to go home and come back for a while before voting. But his wife, even his wife, um, the all-powerful Justice Ibrichi uh, Suzette, yes, Owike, could not get accredited. So uh, what was your experience like? Not really, not really. Uh, that wasn't the general problem. But that's not what is an issue. What is an issue are the pockets of violence we experience in the US. Voters in Kilimanjaro, a situation where local government chairman, wise son, appeals to the electorate to vote for Orlando Tilly as instructed by the government of the US. Others use force. And where the persons who were elected in the district, they came in the returns, uh, chased them out of the community, and so And let the givers, let the ballot boxes, and the government and the ballot boxes. These were the experiences in Bogus. And uh, it's not just Bogus, I mean, it's nationwide. But I'll stop at this point. All right. We received um, uh, several complaints. Um, we, uh, yesterday, I heard from the Labour Party's uh, South-South uh, Zonal Vice um, uh, uh, Chairman, uh, Prince Fever Rubin, who uh, had nothing but complaints about the results of the elections in River State, where we've seen a tug of war uh, between the APC and Labour Party. Um, so, so, so from your observation, uh, would you say that the election in Port Harcourt to River State in general um, was free or peaceful? Let's start from that. Because, you know, the, <laughs> the, the, the incidences in River State from 2015 and 2019 led the nation as far as the violence in elections are concerned. So in terms of peace um, uh, and, uh, and election violence, how would you score uh, those elections in, in River State? Let's start from there before we go to the rest of the country. So I think you said, because you want violence everywhere you had uh, coercion and uh, so just for the reason you, you cannot really say the elections in the university were credible and transparent. I won't really say that because we had violence, we had a situation where uh, some local government and then moved into uh, police centers and put in the red uh, and policemen and in some cases so we had the Voters refused to decline to do what they did. Uh, they were beating some were they shot guns in the head, the fighting them, left with uh, the PV, the givers, and uh, the ballot box. So you cannot say in a situation like that 
the elections were credible, transparent, but they were not by any stretch of All right, all right. Um, I mean, uh, some will say that it's higher than 40% because if you look at um, what happened in River State in 20, 2015, where, you know, people couldn't go out to vote. Um, so say the results, I mean, voting in the oceanic areas of River State and uh, River Orange, parts of the state, Calabari land and all that, uh, or Krika, you know, was not as, as violent as it was in 20, 2015. Sorry, are you, are you, are you yes, yes. So say that, you know, in 2015, you had a lot of violence. Yeah. Yeah, especially in even the river and areas. There is, there, is no, there is no remarkable difference between what happened on Saturday and uh, what happened in uh, 2015. In fact, in 2015, I think the situation was even a lot better than what happened on Saturday. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Okay. 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 Anyway, um, let's look at. We the had a high level of compromise. The police, the security of police. We are really compromised. Yeah, but it's open And the IMF is not an exception. The police, I can tell you, the police are highly compromised in this election. Not hmm. uh, at Lagos State, for example. You saw a situation where, in the, is it Lube or somewhere, somewhere, I think it's called Lube or something, where policemen and soldiers locked themselves with IMF officials, locked themselves in a particular place, and the electorate, the voters have to break it. And they have the beating of their life for daring. We have to it. We are confronting over there. See, so, I met a officer over there. The policemen were there. The army, the soldiers, the people of the British were all there. And you also heard of what happened with the uh, new call, the lady, new call, how she confessed. So, you can never say, and I met is highly complicit in this whole mess. You know, what we had preceding the election was a high blood pressure of the second voters. And after the election, we come to see a uh, high blood pressure of the second voters without, without any concrete performance. INET is complicated. Why would I say that INET is complicated? Unfortunately, Jiga, I'm uh, sorry, uh, I don't know what Jiga has rubbish, a little reputation in the reputation he earned for himself in previous elections, especially in the upcoming elections. I can tell you, I'm really incensed. Really said. You know, there was this talk about uploading the results right from the polling units and so on, that they, they had done all their researches and the INEC chairman and first secretary kept reassuring Nigerians that as they are voting, it will be uploaded and Nigerians are going to see because it was a portal open for them. Nigerians are going to see, so they are going to be read them. But that was not what we saw. In most cases, the papers were not working. And I think that is a deliberate act by INEC. And why did I say it's a deliberate? You would have done test work. Even in your studio, you do your test work before you go on air. You would have done test work. This is not the first time. You are not a neophyte. So you would have done your test work even before the election. Now, you also should have contingency plans. These things, I didn't want to say, Professor Bob Mahmoud, we are people. He's going to tell us he's not aware of all this. He's a professor. This, this is not the first time he's conducting elections. So why did you do this? You said it worked in some states, and you should also realize that in this particular instance, you're talking about national elections. You're not talking about state elections. Mahmoud Yakubu also told Nigerians and the world that he, every problem he asked for was given to him. He said so. Even when we had their financial crunch, when Nigerians were dying in their hospitals, dying in their houses, and so on because they could not have access to their own funds. The CBA releases money to INEP. So there is no excuse whatsoever. The Electoral Act prohibits people from going to the police to the police units with their security men. You saw what happened in Lagos State today. We had that man that was, I forgot to say, that man that was initially uh, asked to, to carry the voting material, went around police stations, checking people with policemen. And nothing happened. Nothing. Chapter, telling them if you know you are not going to vote for the APC, then you leave this place or you'll be killed. It's on, it's on, it's on, it's on, it's on, it, it went viral. It's on video. Don't take. If you don't vote for Mr. A, you'll be killed. And the man did that with impunity, moving up and down. Nothing has happened to him. A certain person is above the law. You saw where a lady was stabbed. She went to the clinic, got treatment, went back to the police station. 
You saw Yola where there was no generator to power the, the, the collection center. They were using their phones and touch lights. No generator. What happened to the billions given to INEC? This gross ineptitude must stop. The INEC chairman is actually prosecuted. This is electoral fraud. How you did explain the issue of no generator? I will explain that. So this election is highly compromised. And INEC chairman cannot get to know himself. It's, even if he says he forgot it, that is criminal negligence. A doctor or a surgeon who has the right to operate on the patient could also be sued for murder when it comes to criminal negligence. Okay, let, let's, say, right. let, let, let's look at the issue. As an authority in that yeah. field, what yeah. open, up, open up, please, please, sir. Um, now, the, the major uh, uh, complaint from uh, uh, observers and or agents of um, opposition parties, the so PDP, APC, maybe SDP, in, in River State, your state, is that um, uh, the, the, the INEC presiding officers or INEC officials refused or said they could not uh, gain a password into the BVAS machine, the BVAS device to be able to snap or capture the, uh, from EC8A, or is it ECA8, uh, from EC8A, they could not capture it because they couldn't gain access into, uh, to the BVAS uh, device or to the portal, whichever it is. And uh, I got some calls, you know, on Saturday late at night um, for some agents, some opposition party agents uh, in Obiakpo, which is a part of River State uh, in Port Harcourt. Uh, and and um, they said they were they were chased away by thugs, who then took the um, INEC officials away. Um, I don't know what I was. They were by, by, uh, forced to go, or they went willingly. So uh, when such a thing happens, can we blame Mahmoud Yakub? You know, because I don't know. Maybe someone did someone um, change the password. I just the told password. you, INEC officials were complicit. <laughs> But it's I blame so INEC so officials and I Yacoub. blame Maku. Excuse me, Kofin. I know what I said. And I also blame the okay, What are you going to say about uh, uh, late arrival of Matua? Who is the box stops at this table? Let us not uh, uh, try to. Uh, what I don't want is try to scare the issues. Let us straddle them. Uh, uh, look at it this way. Look at it. No! Say them the way they are. One thing I detest in life in second location. Say it the way yeah, it, it is. What are you going to say about the generator in Yola? Who approves? What is my his job? He's to go around to ensure that everything is in place. He cannot be exculpated from whatever has gone on, has happened. What are you going to say about that? What are you going to say about late arrival of materials? Who is supposed to ensure that the materials get to everywhere they ought to get to? Who? Who today are we blaming? Who received the money from the federal government? Who said? Who did that we blame it? If everything had gone on smoothly, who would have taken the credits? So let us not prevaricate. Okay. Uh, 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 In fact, is Yakubu, the INF chairman, has failed. He has failed Nigerians. And to account for every cover that was given to him. That is one organization that is hardly audited. Just because Nigerians are not bothered about the cost, they are more interested in the credibility of the election. So you can hardly hear any Nigerian. Everybody becomes one three three trillion, three trillion. Nigerians will give to him. In fact, if you don't release the money to him, they will blame you. So what excuse? And no lights? The elect officials, if they are taken away at one point, you can't blame them. You can't blame them. But what you expect INEC to do is cancel the results there and conduct a fresh one. Oh. That is what we expect INEC to do. But, 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 Especially yes, when you are going to go the result yeah. of the council and the fresh one. So, 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 so you believe If you go ahead to accept the result of the Apollo government area, then I am saying it on live TV that the INEC chairman has collected money. Hmm. Okay, that, yes. That, that, if you go ahead to do that. That's fact, it. <laughs> we have gone, excuse me, Kofi, please. We have gone beyond uh, what, the, what the reporter will say and what a dish will say, witness will say. No! You have the video. And thank God the courts now admit electronic evidence. You have the video. So, Kofi, if you stab somebody, a prima facie case has been established that you stab, 
Now the circumstances of you stabbing him is a different thing altogether. Because it is there. You stab that, but you have seen it. Now the question Nigerians will ask, what are the circumstances? That is where the INEC officials can extricate themselves. You say, no, this is us. We are done at gunpoint. Then you are extricated. But what we want INEC to do, cancel the results from there. And then we now know that you are serious. So but if you go ahead and accept that result, it's unfortunate. Mr. Then you are compromised having it. And I want to tell you that INEC is compromised because how can you want to use an aid to one of the presidential students to convey materials until the nation kicked against it in Lagos? The transporter. Until the nation kicked against it. So I believe that INEC is involved. INEC has been compromised. Oh. What are the beavers? What are you telling me about beavers? So, so Mr. Mr. Secretary, uh, 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 in, in such a situation, me, yeah, Oprah, but please, in such a situation where you know you have um, INEC officials, uh, presiding officers, and all that, saying that they don't have access to uh, the portal, the password has you know it, it can, it's not working. The one they were given is not working, which obviously means someone changed it. Um, I've heard of a story in 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 Aquabum State. There was this when Mike Guinea was still there. There was a, a staff, an ex staff who was fired. You know, he was fired. Why was he fired? He uh, single handedly, unilaterally, because um, he was, I think, in the IT department, began to move uh, 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 voters from one polling unit to the other at the back end of their system, their, their computers, you know, net set up there. You know, and he did it without official permission, you know. So, when he was fired, he, he went to court to say that he was treated wrongfully. And when he was asked by the, ju the judge why he, he, you know, on his own, began to move voters from place to place on the INEC uh, system, he said, well, he was just trying to help you know, the public. So the, the, the import of this story is that sometimes it is possible that INEC officials act on their own without um, the approval of, of the INEC chairman or even Rex. What do you say to this? Kofi, we agree. There are situations like that. And that is why I include the issue of not having uh, the password. These are, these are compromised characters. Because they knew they were going to read their And so they pretended. Now, in that case, they will have to investigate internally. If actually INEC gave them the password, with their repudiate, or they actually don't have the password. So you must interrogate this issue. We will not sweep them under the car. That is one. Number two, INEC officials, the INEC chairman in that situation, will ensure that, look, he tells the world, I am innocent of this. Just like what Mike Guinea did. And that is why today Mike Guinea is seen as a hero. Because he told the world, I am not part of this. I will not accept this. And even prosecuted the professors, two of them. One 73 years, one uh, his trial is still ongoing. That is what the INEC chairman should do. We are not saying he can be everywhere. But let me tell you, if you are to sue, who are you to sue? Do not I know. These other parties are just going, you are just going to join these other parties. You are suing INEC. If anything happens to, if a policeman misbehaves, are you not going to sue the city or the IG? Oh. So, Oponabon Kutara, you know. So, who takes the credit? Yeah, before the election, election started. But who takes the credit if everything goes on well? No, the point I made is good. Okay. Let us not make excuses for the INEC chairman. There is no room for that. If anything goes wrong, even your station today, if you are sued, if Kofi, you make a comment, why do you do the streamers? You are a professional, you know what? If today you make a comment that is defamatory, the sue station. Yes. They are not just in the lack of food. They should be stationed. Okay. That is a no. All right. So, 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 so um, the issue yeah. of INEC chairman, 
if you need anything, go from anywhere. Because we had over 400, as if we were going to war, 400 and something thousand policemen. Even the IG is guilty. All those policemen they saw at the polling units must be punished. And openly too. Okay. Uh, Mr. Yeah, 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 Mr. We'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll get to yeah. Uh, open up, Dara, please. We'll get to the uh, points of security agencies uh, subsequently. But staying with INEC, um, you know this 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 Electoral Act 2022 was um, touted to be uh, a game changer. That's the word that has been used, you know, right in the run up to the election. That the Electoral Act and indeed the um, inclusion uh, of of electronic transmission of votes using the Beavers was going to be a game changer. Everybody talked about beavers. INEC talked about beavers. The political parties talked about <coughs> beavers. The government talked about beavers. Civil society talked about beavers. has been a game changer. Um, now the election has come and gone. On hindsight, we have a benefit. You know. Do you think that the Electoral Act, the electronic transmission of votes, and all that is sufficient to ensure free and fair election? Why, despite all the, oh, yes. all, oh, the hopes, yes. all the hopes we had, oh, yes. I, can tell you that. Yeah. I can quickly tell you that the inclusion of electronic vote, so to speak, is ideated for intended purposes because the whole essence is that even a net official cannot, whether they like it or not, read the election. Because as you cast your it is a blow. Now you remember the solid experience of 2019, where millions were given to INEC to get a server with the belief and conviction that the server was going to be used. When the results were out and PDP went to court. Sorry, my dear. And PDP went to court. What on what ground or what premise was uh, Buhari declared in that 2019 that the server was not known, it is not within the cognizance of the electoral act. Therefore, Cannot be tendered into not admission. If they had used the server, we are even not have been the president of the country. Putinite. That was what happened, and that was why the National Assembly said, "Okay, fine. This issue of technicalities are not technicalities. We are going to address it." They came up with this and so on. Well. Of course, we all know that even the um, uh, INEC had an input, and that was why Nigerians. Believing in the credibility of the Beavers turned out on mass to vote, believing their votes would count. Why are you now having a second talk? Like the question you asked, has it served its purpose? That is the question you asked in summary. It did not, because the Beavers are not human beings, they are machines operated by human beings. So it is not just the law that matters. It has to do with the rectitude of those that are supposed to enforce the law. We have brilliant laws in this country that have made Nigeria next to heaven. It has to do with the implementation of the law. And that's where you now have a situation where you don't have a password. A situation where they send in talks. How can you tell me an officer, police unit officer, doesn't have the password. How do you explain the book of How can you explain Beavers, electoral, electoral material, arriving polling units at 7 p.m. when elections were built and been concluded at 22 30, 7 p.m., believing that you're not going to have people waiting? But President Nigeria is waiting. They were determined to make a change in the They were determined to pass their and they waited. Get 7 p.m. They, they will come with the materials and also we cannot hold the election to get to We are going to, of course, Nigeria said, no, you must conduct this election to be. And the election you have conducted that very night. So 
Alright, I'm going to say that I'm going to say that I'm going to say that Okay, so, so, so um, um, we now Sorry. see, yeah, we now see that uh, River State is, um, is a case study for the dynamics of uh, this election, different aspects of it across the country, uh, which has always been the case, you know, over the years. The River State seems to be a microcosm of the Nigerian situation. Um, looking at the, the pattern of voting, it seems the All Progressives Congress uh, presidential candidate uh, Bola Ashiwaji Bola Metinubu is doing quite well, very well uh, in River State, um, neck and neck alongside Liberal Party and in some instances PDP in some local government areas. And what do you think accounts for this strong showing uh, by the APC presidential candidate in River State? Why I'm asking this is because for the past, for since the APC was formed, they've never really had uh, that massive uh, success in elections in River State. You know, 2015, they lost woefully. In fact, I think uh, the winner had more, well, votes, since, more votes than... Well, I, know, I know the guy. Let me answer. You know, I told another program. Oh, I got yeah, 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 yeah. Please go on. Well, now, in the, in the United States, the answer to your question is so the governor instructed there is a memo from the governor of Rivers to all the local government chairmen, threatening them that you put it in in any local government to be sacked, even though it doesn't have such powers. The national the other that it will be sacked. And don't forget, the local government chairmen have one more year to do. If they have got two, three months, they would have said, well, to hell, no problem. I'll vote my conscience. They have one year. And nobody wants to sacrifice his position at the altar of transparency and credibility. That was what happened. So, and I can tell you authoritatively that a lot of them did what they did grudgingly. They were not happy at all. But they had to protect their offices and their police. That was what happened. And that memo leaked a week to the election. The memo leaked. It was even a memo. And you can see that despite bringing his fusion to bear, PDP still won in some. That okay. That will tell you that River State is seen as a PDP state. Notwithstanding, this election, and like I've always said, shouldn't be about parties. It should be about individuals. The man I supported at the national belongs to a different party from the man I will support at the state. Oh. At the as, uh, as assembly, during the assembly elections and so on. Because I've always preached against a basilic coalition where you bring a dog, a goat, a cow, and you expect everybody the bank on the fence to vote for that cow when you know that that cow is bustling completely. So are you are you are you are you must say, we must depart you, from such so, so, we must depart yeah, from such nonsense. Kutara, so following so, yeah following this, this guess, memo yes. following this memo uh, that you are alleging and I, I wish you could show me a copy so I can verify. Uh, but following this memo you are alleging the governor sent to local government chairman threatening to sack them, which I, he doesn't have the power to do that. But I think uh, we both know that yeah. uh, governors are, yeah. are really powerful. They but you don't know how this is what? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They will look for a way to do it. Um, 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 it so is it that the local government chairman rigged? I mean, how? Because, okay, you've sent a memo saying that they must deliver. No, no, no. I can tell you how it works. No, I'll tell you that. Please, said, thank you. Thank you. It's simple. You know, yes, I'll tell you. It's simple. The local government chairman are the ones closer to those at the brass. Okay. Supposedly. Supposedly. You know what I mean by that? Yes. Now, what they did, because it has happened already, so it's no more conjecture. What they did was to plead with their people, their customers. And knowing too well the consequences of being in the bad book of the local government chairman. Your hands are fettered. 
And there's also an opportunity for those who probably had long ahead to the chairman to reconcile by saying, I've done my own. Work. And it is for one singular reason, pecuniary reason. Because, of course, you know, these things cannot be done just like that. There has to be a reward system. If you know how much you voted for this particular election, you'll be shocked, you'll be amazed. How much? How much was so it? It's a reward system. That's why it's you're a reward here. system. Uh -huh. How much are we talking about? Oh, don't worry. <laughs> Let me not just ban the figure that I'm not really sure. We are looking at the we are looking at the rest because I have friends. I cannot mention names. It is very unfair. But I have friends who said yes, yes, me. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Go feel the truth. There is nothing hidden under the sun. Nothing. Probably you might not have the information. But somebody next to you might have that information. There are things you don't even do, I don't do, I mean, you'll be putting somebody in trouble. You'll put somebody in trouble. Trouble. If you say this make certain disclosure. Okay. So I want to say this. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Please. At that point, most of them got compromised. Okay. I'm talking about the voters. Got compromised. But some still said no. I vote my country. And that's why you have the results you have. But I tell you something. On March 11th, you'll see the dinosaur experience in River State. What do you mean by that? Don't worry. <laughs> no, you have to tell us so we know where you're coming from. Okay, but, but in, in Kutaya, you know what dinosaur means. Yes, yes, yes. A dinosaur could be either way. Is it dinosaur of violence, dinosaur of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can... we dinosaur <laughs> All right. <laughs> and uh, we know that um, um, Sim Fubara delivered his local government area for, uh, for I think, uh, well, for, I think for the APC, am I correct? You know, um, there I'm seeing some part. Sorry? I think uh, the local government chairman of the uh, area of the a PDP press governorship candidate was won by the All Progressives Congress. And indeed, um, the. Yes. Yes. So, so. An African local government. An African local government. Okay. So, so it seems that the, that the, um, it's working. But we've seen. Um, uh, I told I, I, no, I told you, I said the dinosaur school. <laughs> we'll think about that later. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we've, we've, we've seen praise, lots of praise coming the way of the River State Governor from supporters of um, the All Progressives Congress, one of which is the son of uh, Malam Nasser Arufai, who put a picture of his son Wiki alongside his father. They looked happy and laughing. And he says that uh, Wiki is indeed a good politician, that he's uh, what he called promise and do. You know, so. Um, now, what does the future hold for the governor of your state, River State? Being a PDP member, um, obviously the APC supporters are praising him. And um, you've said this memo, leaked, this memo leaked, so it's no longer a, a secret that he has um, you know, sent instructions uh, for another party's candidate to be supported. What does the future hold for Yenso Winke in the PDP, as far as you're concerned? Well, that is left for that is, that is left. He went to court, he ran to court. The story they got known too well. Oh. All right, we seem to be having uh, some difficulty. Open up one Kotari there. Can you hear me, please? All right, uh, of course, there's still uh, uh, election coverage right here on Plus TV Africa. Oh. Yeah, open up one Kotari there, please. Can you hear me, sir? Right, and of course, um, our reactions have continued to flow in from different angles as far as uh, the polls, uh, presidential and national assembly elections um, on Saturday are concerned. And of course, uh, River State has received its fair share of complaints. Um, if you look at the complaints coming from opposition members, you know, it's mostly been from Lagos State, River State, Edo State, Delta State, and other states like that. In fact, there's one from Aquibom State, uh, a report that says that, um, you know, uh, the Nigerian army intercepted a bus, a bus filled with INEC officials, policemen, and fake 
soldiers who went around, you know, one particular senatorial, di senatorial district to rig elections. But, Oponabon Kotara, if you can hear me, welcome back. You were making a point about the future of your governor, yes, of Mickey, uh, in the PDP. Uh, if you can hear me, please go on. All right, it seems Oponabon Kotara is uh, still not able to be with us. Um, we've been looking at the Independent National Electoral Commission, and of course, can you hear me? yes, I can hear you, uh, Miss Senko Tarek. Can you hear me? I said, "Snap for Nigeria to decide." Somebody who said he was going to support any candidate that the Methodist, even when he came to university, did not support. Somebody who accused others of moving from one party as political or them of uh, political hub, moving from one party to the other, he never did. So, but that which is worse, being a mole in the system. And openly disagree with the system and defect. You are there working against your party. And you talk of, in quotes, this integrity. You talk of integrity, in quotes, rather than integrity. So Nigerians will see who the kind of person he is. And I can tell you that even those who's rushing to join now know, they already know his participants and the kind of person. And there can't be any trust. But policy is all about interests. It's a concentric circle of articulated interest, of conspiracies and articulated interest. So right now, they need it. But after now, we will hear. We are still in this country. Yeah. You will hear. Okay. Um, that um, will tell you the level of acceptance, yeah. the level of legitimacy. You will hear. Let's, let's watch it. Mr. Secretary, I was on a. I was on a Twitter. I was on a Twitter space last night, just listening to, uh, you know, conversations by people in Port Harcourt. You know, I'm still a Port Harcourt uh, boy, if you want to call it that. And I was just following. And That's what you have, yeah, one of the persons that asked a question, and I would like to throw that question to you. It says in River State, the Tar River State. Why is it that we've seen more of a uh, complaints, complaints of electoral violence in Obiapo and Farga? This is Port Harcourt city local government area more than any of the other parts of the state why the concentration of um you know violence and rigging in that part of the state what do you say to that what's your answer you know politics is all about extra democracy is all about the world today. so we are looking at numerical spread and these are the two local governments with the largest number of voters and so politicians scramble to get these two local governments that is just the reason why you have the violence there Okay, okay, interesting. Um, the 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 opposition Labour Party has uh, already called for the the cancellation of the uh, presidential election, but in the last uh, few hours, the national chairman of Labour Party, uh, Julius Abure Esquire, he has called on the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, to cancel all unverified election results in River State, uh, describing the process as not only fraudulent, but also uh, falling below expectations. Um, so he made the call uh, on Sunday in a statement of available to journalists in Abuja. Um, he expressed shock, you know, by the reports of incidents of thuggery and attacks unleashed by agents allegedly working for uh, the River State government across various polling uh, units in River State. Um, do you think the, all the elections in River State that are not verified, or who's, um, uh, you know, uh, which are being contested by the opposition, uh, should be should be uh, cancelled. No, not at all. Um, cancellation should be premised on the evidentiary proof. For example, you have areas that were violent. Carried away, and so on. Those are the areas that results the results of those areas of the council. Areas where the elections were seamless, the process was seamless. Why do you have to cancel? Doesn't make sense because all we are asking for is a credible and transparent election. So if a particular polling unit is credible, 
Why do you have to cancel that election? But you can cancel where the whole process is marred by violence, tobacco, uh, uh, catching the world ballot boxes, and so on. Once you find out that there is an infraction of the Electoral Act, then in such areas you can call for cancellation. Not in areas that the process was canonical, I mean, it was orderly, I mean, in, in tandem, in sync with the process of the Electoral Act. Don't need to cancel some of Don't need to cancel Okay. So I will not call for cancellation of all. Even at the national level, all over the country, I'm not saying all. Just like in Nigeria, they said they are going to, they are going to, they conducted one yesterday, some yesterday. Yes, you know, just pockets. Not all. Not all. I will not call for that. All right. All right. All right. Uh, yesterday, we noticed that um, I think at about, at about uh, 1 p.m. on Sunday, uh, 1 or 2 p.m. on Sunday, the only two local government areas had brought the physical results in River State, you know, uh, to the State Coalition Center on Abar Road. Uh, that, those were Akoko Toro and uh, Ahoda East. That's at about 3 p.m., only two. Um, later that day, within that time, the third local government brought their results to the Coalition Center. That was, um, I think it was Asari Toro, making three. And I asked uh, uh, a journalist from River State uh, why these um, local government areas, which uh, outside of the Port Harcourt metropolis, were submitting their results before the likes of uh, Obiapo local government area and um, uh, Port Harcourt city local government area, where INEC headquarters is. You know, um, someone said maybe it's because of the volume of, of um, voters and the number of polling units and all that. Uh, what do you say to this? No, I completely disagree. You are aware of the violence and so on that took place in those areas. I think that there is some sort of evil manipulation going on. Yes, that is the only reason. And that's why I said INET is also coming. Okay. How can it take three days to get results when you assure Nigerians that the results are going to be announced same day? Within 24 hours. Even if it's not simple, let's say within 24 So if you don't get the results on that Saturday before 2 30 on Sunday, the results are supposed to be out. Next one. So, what I see. If you are aware of the numbers, they come up with the number of voters and everything, they are seeing of all the facts. Before they get the assurance. So, what are we talking about? So, that excuse is neither here nor there, it's meant best. Certain evil machination, I mean, every manipulation that going on. That's the truth. So, you think the delay, the, the delay in, in, in getting those results from where the INEC office is? You know, it is not just a delay, it is dilatoriness. A delay could be as a function of force majeure. Dilatoriness is a deliberate act. It is not a delay, so to say. Because it's dilatoriness. Because the process is that um, when the voting is concluded, at the polling unit there, they take out the ballot papers, sort them out, per election. Coffee, yeah. coffee, <laughs> coffee. <laughs> okay, I like that. A quick one. Because of my time, yes, a quick one. A quick one, coffee. Mm -hmm. You don't need to say, why did Mr. A fail or pass his exam? Because the process is he has to sit down in class to read, he has to go for prep, he has to go. No, you, all these processes have been taken into consideration. Before I met chairman, they came up with the bodies of Arandi and gave the assurance. So there's no point going back to uh, the, the process is you have to go. To. It's not necessary. You have said you are going to be on air at seven. You don't just come and sit down. That simply means the technical crew know what they want to do for it to be on that set. So you don't need to go up with uh, the man said the, the process is this. You know the man has to bring the camera, he has to set the camera, he has to zoom in, he has to zoom out, he has to be a driver. We have things that are not interested. This was what you said. 
and we're holding on the holy to the to that. So they just are not interested in what the process is. This was their servant, knowing too well the processes. So do I come to tell what the process is all about? I'm not interested in the process. I'm not. I'm not. All right. All right. Uh, Mr. Gotari, we have to go. Um, Some would also say, you know, the role of resident electoral commissioners, sometimes they uh, act independently of um, the national chairman of INEC. We may not really know what is going on in the state. Um, as said yesterday, that 2, 3 p.m., uh, a, re a reporter told us that the wreck in, in the was, was, was nowhere to be found. We have to say goodbye to you. Thank you so much, Chupan, for your time. Thank you. Um, we'll see what happens. You. Maybe um, I will see PDP, uh, Liberal Party, or possibly, it seems, APC win the presidential vote in River State to have the majority of the the vote. So we'll see what happens then, of course, we would. No problem. Wait, wait, whenever you're ready, 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 call on me, I'm ready. Right. There is no problem. And I'll, I'll reach you okay. so we talk about the dinosaur. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, we've been looking at, uh, you know, different aspects of the 2023 presidential and national assembly election, starting with the conduct of INEC and looking at the complaints coming from uh, uh, party agents and voters out there particularly in River State, uh, as a microcosm of Nigeria, just to understand um, how it's worked there and then now put that um, in perspective as far as Nigeria is concerned. We have more guests coming away on the breakfast this morning, a Breakfast Ballot 2023 special. And um, we'll be looking at not just Sinek, but the issue of electoral violence and uh, the activities of political thugs during the election. Um, Stay with us, we'll take a break. And when we come back, we have more conversations. My name is Kofi Bartels. This is The Breakfast, Ballot 2023 Special.